Blog Talk Radio. Welcome, world. Welcome once again to Tuesday Talk with Key West Lou. I am your host, Louis Patron. Absolutely no question, the weeks will get crazier up until the time of the election and probably thereafter, too, the way Donald Trump seems to be setting things up. I can see a multitude of court fights coming up, which are going to extend into the early part, maybe the first six months of the next year. I question whether Donald Trump will even leave the White House if he loses uh, on January 20th. All kinds of different things, improper things are going to happen. I, I wonder if our democracy can survive. Anyhow, want to? where are we going tonight? Oh, we're going to Washington, D.C., Oregon, Utica, New York, North Texas, Maine, and Key West. Not, we're not traveling very much tonight, though they are distances apart. Let's start with coronavirus, plaguing us terribly as it is plaguing the world. Uh, over the weekend, we exceeded 200,000 people, the United States, American people, dying from coronavirus. In the whole world, only one million people have died so far from coronavirus. Only one million people. Which means that the United States has 20% of the deaths in the entire world. 20% of the deaths in the entire world uh, happened, occurred here in the United States. Well, we only have 4% of the world's population. (laughs) Yet we have 20% of the world's deaths from coronavirus. And the whole reason is because Donald Trump failed to recognize at the beginning the danger of of the the virus, has done next to nothing, has really done nothing, uh, but denied its existence, et cetera, et cetera, and not do the right things, not listen to the doctors, not listen to the scientists, not listening to the public health officials, and see where we are. and there are a number of people that still want him for president. I cannot understand. You know, it, these 200,000 people who died, uh, I'd say maybe 120,000, 130,000 of them would be alive today if Trump had handled this properly. What this man did, he had 200,000 people standing on the gallows with the rope around their necks, and he pulled the lever so they would all drop through the hole. Okay. Let's talk about some more about coronavirus. Now, we got 201,000 deaths as of today. We went up over 200,000. Uh, I'm going to compare the United States to Canada. We live in the same hemisphere. We're basically the same kind of people. I don't know where we are any different. I have many Canadian friends. Uh, they're like us. We're like them, okay? But they listen. Listen to me now. We have 201,000 deaths in this country. Do you know how many deaths Canada has had from coronavirus in the last six months? In the last six months, only zero, zero deaths, not one death from coronavirus. Now, right now, the United States is experiencing, and has been for a couple of months, 1,000 deaths a day. Do you know how many deaths a day Canada's had in the last six months? Obviously, zip, nothing again, because... They haven't had a death in six months. Uh, We also have in our country, because we don't follow the rules, Trump has not let our people properly, and our people have been too stupid, uh, but to do what they want to do, because if the president can do what he wants to do, so can we. It's a free country. Well, we have 40,000 new coronavirus cases a day. I repeat, 40,000 new coronavirus cases a day. You know how many Canada has? 500 a day. We have 40,000. They have 500. The difference, the Canadian, the Canadian leadership said, the government, here's what we got to do to control this thing. Mask, social distancing, wash your hands. They did it. They did the basics. They didn't yell, scream, you're violating my freedoms. I don't like a mask. And their leader said, you must do this and we'll be all right. And they are okay. But we're not because our leader did not tell us to wear masks, social distance, and wash our hands, okay? And uh, look what's happened. Now, the uh, 
I'm sorry, excuse me a moment. What's happened here and why this has occurred is because, and I suggested this a few moments ago, Trump has not followed the dictates, the dictates of the medical and scientific people. They are the experts. He is not. Canada listened to the experts. Trump did not. And you see what is occur- has occurred and is occurring. Last night, there was a rally someplace. Trump has these rallies every day now, some, as many as three in a day. I raised a question I raised a couple of times already in the last month. Trump goes to these rallies, you know, leaves the White House, hops on his helicopter, gets to his uh, U.S. Air One plane, uh, and he's taken all over the country, speaks, gets back on his plane, and he goes home to the White House. Who's paying for this plane? This is the number one plane in the United States. It is the president's plane, but not to be used for personal purposes. And running, there's no question, running for office, political office, even if you're president, that's a personal part of your life. He should be paying that bill, or the Republican Party should be paying that bill. I'd like to know who's paying the bill, if anyone. And I'll tell you right now, and you know it, Trump is not paying that bill, nor is the Republican Party, because Trump never pays for anything. He doesn't care. He doesn't understand. Well, whatever community he was in last night, I forget, with this rally, I'm a retired lawyer. I spent 46 years in the courtroom. Sometimes a witness is on the stand, and you know what he's saying, and he's a boring witness, and he's not that important to the case you thought. So I'd sit there daydreaming a bit while I'm half listening to him, sometimes doodling, and all of a sudden the witness would say one word that didn't fit. And I'd write that word down on my pad, and then I knew I had something to cross-examine that person on because something was wrong. Last night, I had the same experience listening to Donald Trump at the rally. Out of a clear blue sky, it didn't fit. He said, you know, children don't get coronavirus. Children don't get coronavirus. And then he said, well, they may get a little bit, but not that much. We don't have to worry about children. It's the older people we have to worry about. I said, why did he jump to the children for about 15 seconds? Didn't make sense. I understood today. I understood today because (laughs) we find out today, okay, not from Donald because he talked about this last night, that kids, he said, don't get the virus. Uh, But today it was said that in in the United States thus far, 500,000 children have come down with coronavirus. That's a lot of kids. That's a lot of kids. And the other thing that came out, and this is the reason why I think Trump said last night that children don't get this or they get it very little, because it was also announced today, assuming we have the vaccine by the end of this, these were Trump's people talking, by the end of this month uh, or early next month sometime, which is a crock of shit, by the way. Don't buy it. And we're going to find out when three months from now we still don't have a legitimate uh, vaccine. It was announced today that a virus will not be available for the children of this country till next fall, a year, one year from now, next fall. Because the way they've set this thing up, the old people, the first responders first, and then they work down, the kids are at the bottom of the ladder. That's horrible. Absolutely horrible. Does it, do the American people understand this? Those that are compelled to vote for him mentally, please listen. He's not only destroying the country, he's destroying our children. Go back to school, remember? I'm waiting for the school numbers to come out in a couple of weeks. See how many schools have had to close. How many children have come down with coronavirus who should not have had to come down with it. Now, we go now to the Supreme Court. This is a war. Uh, Justice uh, Ruth uh, Bader Ginsburg died just last week. Her body is not yet in the grave. She is, she is in Washington being honored in, in, in one of the federal buildings or in the 
uh, entrance to the uh, Supreme Court. I don't know which one, but she is being honored at this time. He doesn't le- even let her body get warm because apparently the judge said to her daughter, who's a lawyer, a few days before she died, that she hoped, in effect, that she hoped that Trump would wait until the, that the appointment of the, her replacement would await the election of the next president. Today, Trump said, oh no, his people said, he said and his people said, he said, that is not what the judge said. It's been made up by the Democratic politicians. Isn't that horrible? He uses this woman's death to try to help his own ends. Now, let me tell you what's going to happen here. The Democrats can make all the noise they want. They're not going to get any place. I'm a Democrat. I don't want to see this woman that he's going to appoint, because either one of the two women he's going to appoint are, wow, (laughs) they are really to the right. There's so much to the right, it isn't fair. And that means the end, my friends, of Roe versus Wade, uh, the Obamacare, don't kid yourself. They control. They can do anything they want now, the Republican right. Uh, and he can't win. We, the Dem- Democrats can't win the fight. Uh, there's a short period of time. He is the president. The Constitution says he has the right to uh, nominate someone. He's exercising his presidential right, as he tells us every day now. And it is his right. He's moving things fast. Normally it takes several months to get someone approved. And this person will probably be approved in the next two weeks uh, and will be sitting on the Supreme Court bench. Uh, A disgrace under the circumstances, but they got it. The, the, The Republicans have to approve her. The Republicans control the Senate. Trump will have nominated her. Everybody's going to be kumbaya on the Republican side. They're going to get their choice. It's going to happen. So we have to think what happens afterwards. You see, what's happening now is a battle. This is just a skirmish. Uh, Her getting nominated, voted on, and being seated swiftly. It's the war that has to be won. And if the Democrats are not able to turn this thing around in the next six months, listen to what I'm saying, you're going to have for the next generation a radical Republican right on the Supreme Court bench that you will not believe the laws that are come down that are going to be upheld and not upheld, which will affect Republicans and Democrats alike personally. Personally, unless perhaps you're one of that 1%, the favored rich. Now, what the Democrats have to do, my friends, whether you're a Republican or a Democrat, you must vote Democrat this year. How could you not when you see what's going on in this country? We have to elect a Democratic president. We have to flip the Senate and make that a Democratic Senate. Then, come January 20th, we have a new president, a Democratic president. Joe Biden, he, he can now set up the scenario. He will pass laws. He will initiate laws. The Congress will pass laws. The Senate included. They will approve uh, these proposed laws to add more seats to the Supreme Court. It's been done in the past, only twice favorably, once unfavorably through the courts. But we need to expand the court. Unless this country, this country is going to be screwed for a generation. Please understand that. This isn't a Democrat or Republican thought on my part. It's we don't want the far right controlling everything. I don't mind a split court. You win sometimes, you lose. It balances things out. This way will not balance things out. So it can happen. Add two more states. Was it Puerto Rico and what's the other state they want to add? I can't remember. But that'll give two Democratic, two more Democratic states. It's a dirty, dirty war. The Republicans always fight a dirty, dirty war. The Democrats never fight a dirty, dirty war. This is the time, and it's really not that dirty. They're just doing, they're using their heads to do the right thing for the country. So the Democrats will lose in the next two, three, four weeks, but in three months they will begin winning on this issue. Another point with regard to the courts. Again, I'm a retired attorney. Uh, Two Supreme Court justices were Earl Warren and 
David Souter. Now, both were Republicans, conservative Republicans. Earl Warren was governor of California. He ran, he ran on the Republican ticket in 1948 for vice president of the United States. He was running for vice president together with Tom Dewey, who was running for president. Dewey lost. Uh, when the next campaign came around in 52, Eisenhower was preferred. He was running against Robert Taft. Uh, Taft was tough. But also running in the primaries early on was Earl Warren. He was taking another shot at becoming president. Uh, and so we know that Eisenhower won. Now, Eisenhower thought Earl Warren was a good guy, a good American. He'd been a district attorney, a governor of California, did great things, uh, ran as a Republican, was considered a conservative. He made him chief justice of the United States Supreme Court. <laughs> I'm laughing because i got to tell you, soon after Eisenhower said for his eight years in office, he says, what a mistake I made in appointing this guy to the Supreme Court bench. Forget Chief Justice, because Warren turned liberal, okay? He's the man who gave you Brown versus Board of Education. Uh, and it really bothered Eisenhower. That he said, that's my mistake. I made a mistake. I appointed Earl Warren. And see what happens. You never know, my friends. Then there's David Souter. David Souter, oh, in 1980 sometime he got, uh, he uh, was suggested for the court, and he was approved. And he sat for 19 years in, as an associate justice of the United States Supreme Court. Now, Souter came from New Hampshire. What could be a more conservative state? He was known as a conservative. He was known as an intellectual conservative. Once he became a judge on the Supreme Court, most of his decisions were with the liberal side of the court. The man switched and went the other way. My point, you don't know what someone's going to do, okay? Even one of these women he might appoint now, Trump. You never know. It happens rarely, but here it happened within a period of 40 years, twice in our history. That's an interesting thing, the way things, people, their thinking changes. Or maybe they feel that what they thought was right really wasn't, and the people were getting screwed, and now they've got to jump on the other side. All right, now I want to tell you about a, the legal, I want to stay at the legal system for a moment. Let me stay here. I've written about this in the last several months. I've talked about it several times. I'm going to share it with you again tonight. Our legal system, our judicial system, is behind the times. We're in two centuries ago. <laughs> I mean, we haven't changed in the law in I don't know how many years. We never change anything because that's the way the law is. It's very conservative. It moves slow, and it takes forever to resolve a case. I mean, you hear about these cases that take one, two, and three years to reach the Supreme Court. You hear, you hear about accident cases, simple automobile accident case in the state court. It takes two or three years most times because the process is so overburdened with so many stupid rules, and I can speak to them. I, I was an experienced, I am an experienced trial lawyer, that it burdens the system, and everything moves slow and is in violation of one of the first things we were taught in law school. Listen to what I'm going to say. Justice delayed is justice denied. Justice delayed is justice denied. Why am I raising this issue again tonight? Because there's going to be lawsuits coming out of this election. Do you think Trump's going to sit on his ass if he loses? He's already set up his court systems in each state. He already knows the grounds he's going to be uh, bringing lawsuits on. He's going to tie up the court system with these issues for the, the federal system for the next three years. Now, that's if we let the court system proceed as it is. The court, the Supreme Court, which controls all federal courts, has the power to decide that a certain case is of such importance that it mo must move swiftly 
and they can change the rules. If something is supposed to take uh, 60 days before the other side has to react, and then 60 days again, the court can say you've got one week to get your papers in, Counselor, and you, you get your papers in and answer in one week also, and in two weeks we're having an oral argument on this issue. Then win, lose, or draw, you go to the next level, uh, to the uh, Circuit Court of Appeals. That's the way it's got to work. Or th- We're going to be in litigation over who's the president for the next two or three years, which does not make sense to me. And I'll say this. Once Biden's in there, He's got to appoint a group or a commission to make a study, a year-long study, on how to improve the judicial system so it becomes fair again, so the judges don't have to work like they do. Let me tell you something about federal judges. I never saw a federal judge who did not eat his lunch at the bench while he was hearing uh, legal arguments on a case. They never left the bench for lunch. They had a a can of soda and a sandwich, and they would listen to the lawyers argue their cases while they were eating. There was no time. The federal system is so overburdened, I can't tell you. And uh, we need more judges, not just Republican judges, uh, conservative judges. Uh, We like to to think our judges are fair. Uh, But we need more judges, and the rules have to change, and it's got to be done. Because we're just, these lawsuits take too long. The, the important issues have to be decided today, when the problem is here, when the pain is here, when the concern is here, not tomorrow when, who cares? Uh, I want to tell you about a fire in Oregon. This is a very sad story. This is an extremely sad story. The fires, the wildfires in California have stretched into Oregon and some into Washington, the state of Washington. Uh, About two weeks ago, the fire was pretty bad in Oregon, and uh, the family home, a lot of family homes were destroyed, but this particular family home was supposedly okay. The husband had left to fight the fire someplace, but the fire, the fire, the forest fires turned and came at the house. Uh, The grandmother, child, 13-year-old son, dog, and wife were in the house. The, what was found after the fire destroyed the house, and here's what happened. They found the grandmother and her grandson, 13-year-old grandson, sitting in the front seat of a car that was literally burned to the ground. Their body was down to almost bones. They had been burned to death in the car. And the grandson sitting, sitting there in the passenger seat, was holding in his lap the bones of his dog. Now the father's going home. He's looking for his family. He's driving down a road. And he sees this woman walking along the road, who obviously had been burned in the fire. She looked like hell. And he stopped. He stopped his truck uh, to see if he could help her. And first thing he said, though, I'm, I'm looking for my family. I'm looking for my wife and son. And He didn't recognize the woman. She looked up at him and said, I am your wife. That's how badly her face was burned. And you can only appreciate what I am saying if you have seen the face of a very badly burned person. They do not like look normal at all. Their flesh is hanging. They're from another world. I had several cases involving burns, and it's sickening. And you can only go so far to repair a face burn that badly. He did not recognize his wife, and his wife just said, I am your wife. And that's one of the things that happens in a fire like the wildfires we're having on the West Coast. Okay, where are we on time here? Well, we got a little time left. Uh, I want to chat for a minute about Utica, New York, my hometown. Now, what can happen in Utica, New York? 50,000 people. Nothing happens in Utica, New York. Good place to live. Nothing happens, okay? I haven't lived there in 15 years, but nothing happens in Utica. It's an all-American community. Well, they had a problem this past Saturday. The Black Lives Matter group in Utica was scheduled to do a protest march Saturday afternoon down our main drag, Genesee Street, mile, mile and a half. That's on Saturday. 
the Thursday before, two or three days before, in Craigslist was an ad running that said protesters wanted for, you know, to be against Black Lives Matter in Utica, New York, uh, you'll be paid $40 a day. We'll transport you in to protest. Wow. And this, this little ad also said, just think, because they were looking for black people, though the ad didn't say it, it, intimidated, it insinuated black people. Just think, we're going to go after the New Hartford Shopping Center, New Hartford being in a a suburb of Utica, they're attached to the two communities, and it's a big shopping center. We're going to go in there. We're going to bust windows, and we're going to take over the center. We're going to take over the stores, and then people like you can start operating your businesses out of those stores without paying any rent. Scott's honor. That's what the ad said, in effect. And then it was running on social media. So Utica picked up on it, the police picked up on it, the New Hartford Shopping Center picked up on it, and on Friday, the New, York, uh, the New Hartford Shopping Center, they barricaded their places, they put up the plywood over the windows, the police were ready, and came Saturday in the march, no one showed up. And I don't think anyone showed up because the word was out because whoever ran the ad was stupid and made it public what they were going to do. I, I talk to you about this. I share it with you to show what the other side does. The, you, we've heard with Portland, Washington, that people were being busted in to be anti-protesters, to protest as anti-protesters, and were being paid. Here is an actual concrete example. In my hometown, a little town of Utica, New York, a uh, typical American community. What was even more interesting, <laughs> nothing happened during the parade. The, the, the Black Lives Matter people went down the street. They chanted what they wanted. They carried their, their signs. Afterwards, the head of the Black Lives Movement in Utica spoke to the press. And she said, there's no problem between the blacks in this community and the police. There's no problem in this community between the black people and the mayor. We have no problems. They're treating us well. We just think things could be better, and we want to improve on what we have. That's the purpose of our protest today. There was no reason for anyone coming in here to start trouble. That's the story. Okay. Donald Trump, he set a good example for us. Remember when he said, drink bleach, drink Clorox, within a minute, kills the coronavirus, or give yourself a shot of bleach or Clorox, kills the coronavirus. Some assholes, the only way I can say it, believed him, even to today. In the month of July in North Texas, 46 people drank bleach, some of it Clorox. They drank bleach, 42nd people 46 people in order to prevent coronavirus from overtaking them. I'm laughing. It's so stupid. I can't believe anyone would do it. Uh, and the Texas Poison Center Network had the following to say. There were 46 people. They drank the bleach. And uh, some got sick, not knowing that bad, uh, that serious. Uh, he, the Poison Center also said, that since Trump made that announcement several months ago, they have had a 71% uptake in people drinking bleach and coming to them for help. They've had a 63% uptake in calls from other households where the people didn't call to say they drank it, asking if they could drink it and what the dangers were. Thank you, Donald Trump, for that. And thank you for joining me tonight. That is the show for this evening. Uh, I'm glad you're with me again. My numbers keep going up. I love you people. Listen to me. I get a thrill out of doing the show. I've been doing it for years. And I'm glad that you who listen enjoy it also. Share it with your friends if you would. Uh, I look forward to being with you again next week. It will be another interesting, exciting show because this country is in the midst of great excitement and interesting things. See you again next week.